Hey folks, welcome back to Eigen Designs. I'm your host, Mark, and I've got a really cool video for you today. I'm going to be making a decorative serving tray using the other half of a walnut slab that I used in a table recently, and I'll be combining it with a two-stage epoxy pour along with some decorative wine corks to create a really attractive and unique wine serving tray for a wine enthusiast that I have in my life. Combining epoxy with traditional woodworking is becoming a really popular trend right now and is a way to expand your capabilities as a woodworker. So if you want to see how I did it, stay tuned and find out. As we open up on this dramatic shot of my French cleat wall, I want to start off by saying that it's never been easier to get into epoxy resin style woodworking than it is right now. Not only are there a ton of selections out there in terms of resins and colorings that you can choose to use, but there's also the uh, addition of the HDPE reusable molds, uh, so you don't have to build a form every time you build a small project. So I begin by taking my mold, which is 10 inches by 18 inches, and placing it face down on my slab and tracing out where I need to cut. This will be the piece of wood that actually is inside the mold itself and gets paired with the resin in the later step. Now there's a few different ways that you can cut this particular slab. In a recent video I did of an end table, I actually used a straight edge and my circular saw, and I made two passes to cut straight down the middle of the slab. If you had a track saw, you could do the exact same thing featured here. But for this particular video, I'm going to be using a different method where I use some scrap plywood as a sled along with some painter's tape and some CA glue. And I'll be using the straight edge of the scrap plywood as a reference that's going to meet up against the fence of the table saw. This will allow me to keep a guided cut all the way through the table saw safely without having to get out my circular saw, which makes an absolute mess of my shop. Once the rip cut is made, I go over to my crosscut sled and cut the remaining piece of the slab to length so it'll fit in the mold. As an optional step, I then took it over to my jointer and just took a 32nd of an inch off the bottom just to create a nice flat parallel surface. And then I trued up one of the edges from the recent cut through the table saw. Once that was done, I used the T-track in my workbench to clamp down the piece and use a wire brush on the end of my drill to remove any excess bark that's on the live edge of the walnut. The epoxy doesn't do a very good job adhering to the loose bark, so it's best to remove that so you've got really good adhesion between the resin and the piece of wood that's in your mold. And before we proceed to the next step, which is mixing and pouring the epoxy, I do a quick dry fit just to make sure that the piece of wood sits nice and snug inside of the mold. I'll be using some deep pour epoxy for both of the epoxy pours and two different colors of pigment to get the nice red wine color that I'm looking for in the board. And to help mix these in the right ratios, I'm going to be using a measuring cup, but I'm crossing out the ratios that I'm not going to be using. Don't ask me how I learned this, <laughs> it's definitely the hard way, but by highlighting the one that we are going to be using, it makes it easier to pour the two parts resin to the one part hardener. So while I'm mixing this up, let me share some lessons I've learned working with epoxy over the last year or so. Um, if your epoxy never sets, or it's still tacky or gummy to the touch, it's usually one of three reasons. One is you didn't mix it in the right ratios, and that's an easy fix by using some measuring cups like this and following the directions of the manufacturer. Two is you didn't mix it well enough. So epoxy needs a lot of time to mix properly, usually three to five minutes. I'm using a drill here to help speed the process along, but it's important that you mix it well. And the third is you can't have more than about 6% and other stuff in there like coloring and pigment and things like that. 
So if you get those three things right, you'll be in good shape. This is a trick that I've learned to help get out some of the air bubbles that's in the epoxy mixture. And I hope my wife doesn't see me using this pot on this video. But if you take a, a pot of water and place the epoxy in it and let it sit for about, you know, 20 or 30 minutes, it helps mobilize a lot of the finer air bubbles and gets it out of the epoxy before you ever pour it so it doesn't become trapped in your project later. You don't want to get it boiling, just warm enough to where the you reduce the viscosity of the epoxy and allows all those bubbles to go to the top of the epoxy. Also take care when you're making an epoxy pour like this to try not to introduce new air bubbles into the mixture that you just spent time removing from the mixture. Now the reason why I'm only pouring a little bit is I need to leave enough height to where I can put the wine corks in in a later step and then we'll be covering over all of this later with clear epoxy to create the look of the final board that we're making. Now I forgot to do this before pouring the epoxy, but before it begins to set and cure, take a level and just make sure that the surface that you're pouring the epoxy on is level. And if it's not, use some stuff to shim it to get it to level so the epoxy cures flat. Once that's done, you can take a heat gun or a lighter just to remove any of the surface bubbles that are left over from the pour. After the epoxy's had about 24 hours to cure, I take some wine corks, cut them in half, and then you use some CA glue and some activator to adhere them to the red epoxy surface. I'm doing this because whenever we pour the clear epoxy in the next step, these will float if they're not secured to the surface. Now take note that the red epoxy is not fully cured at this point, but it is hard enough to glue the corks to the surface and proceed with the next epoxy pour. And to create this clear mixture, we'll be using the same method where we have two parts resin to one part hardener, although this time we won't be adding any pigment to it. I do think it's interesting that the mixture starts out cloudy, but once you've got good mixture between the hardener and the resin, it turns into almost a completely clear fluid. Now with this clear fluid, you can see a lot of the air bubbles that are being introduced into the resin as we're mixing it. I tried my best to avoid it, but some of that's inevitable. So I go back to the hot water method to mobilize some of these loose bubbles. If you plan on doing a lot of epoxy work, they do make vacuum canisters, which can remove the air bubbles effectively as well. Once the air bubbles are removed, I go back to the tray and pour the clear epoxy over the wine corks that we just installed, bringing it right up to the line of the existing walnut board. And then once again, I use a heat gun just to remove any of the surface bubbles that are created whenever pouring the mixture. The nice thing about these HDPE molds is that they're reusable. Now to get your project out of these, I start off by just gently tapping the inside with not very much force, but you're just trying to create and introduce a little bit of air between the epoxy that's now cured and the mold that it is currently adhered to. Once you've broken that seal around the perimeter, you can then turn it upside down and gently tap on the underside of the mold to, to dislodge your project. Now, one thing you'll notice about this particular mold is it doesn't have straight edges. And I'm assuming that this is a design feature to allow you to get projects out of it. But because the edges are not straight, they have a little bit of a, a slope to them. The first thing we have to do before doing any kind of planing and cleanup work is to trim all four edges of the board. So I use my crosscut sled to provide four nice clean surfaces on each side of the board. Now it's time to flatten this thing and remove a lot of the excess epoxy that we have left over from the pour. Now your planer is great for this and the underside of your project should be flat because even though a little bit of epoxy got under there, 
the bottom part of the mold is a flat reference surface. So we start off by planing the excess material from the top, then we'll flip it over and repeat the process to make sure that both sides are nice, flat, and parallel. And once that's done, it's time to begin the most labor intensive part of these type of epoxy projects, and that's the sanding. So I break this up into two different parts. I'm gonna do a lot of dry sanding all the way up to 320 grit. And then I'm gonna switch over and do some wet sanding. Now, depending on how clear of a finish you want, some people stop at 220, some people go all the way up to 4,000 grit and beyond. So I'm looking for a pretty clear finish because we've got those corks embedded into the project. So I actually worked my way all the way up to 3000 grit. And you can see here on the screen how I stair stepped my way through this. I use my radial orbital sander as well as some wet sanding disc that I picked up from Amazon. I'll have a link to those in the description below. And this makes really, really quick work of the sanding process. Just make sure not to skip grits because you're looking for a crystal clear finish. Once most of the sanding is done, I then take some time to mark out where the holes for the handles are gonna go. And I use a simple straight bit to drill through the top of the epoxy board. And then on the underside, I use a paddle bit to countersink where the screw heads are gonna sit for two reasons. One is to make sure the screws will reach the handles, but two, to make sure that the board will still sit flush on the counter without being uh, obstructed by the screws on the bottom side. Now for the finish for this particular board, I decided to go with the wood oil finish. Normally I finish boards like this with just a straight mineral oil or some sort of a wax and mineral oil mixture. I decided to use a wood oil finish for this particular board and I didn't quite get the luster that I was looking for out of the epoxy. There was still a little bit of a cloudiness to the finish. The wood looked beautiful, but it just didn't have the right luster for what I was looking for. So I decided to dip into my automotive toolkit and use some car polish, which is, you could think of polish as a very, very fine grit sandpaper, depending on whether you're using compound or polish. In this case, I used polish. And you can use that to help increase the luster. And essentially what you're doing is you're removing finer and finer surface scratches. So I did a few rounds of this, making sure to cover the wood with painter's tape before applying the polish. And the final results were great. It was clear and lost all the cloudiness that it had before. The final step in this process is just to attach the handles using the holes that we pre-drilled in a previous step. So here's how the final tray turned out. Now the video makes it look like the red epoxy is kind of a fire engine red, but in person you see more of the black pigment that we added, which gives it more of a wine color to it. Now total time in the project was about three hours, although there is waiting time in between certain steps, and that's just the nature of dealing with epoxy. You've got to wait for it to cure, so these projects tend to linger in your shop a little bit longer than normal. All right, I've got more content coming, so subscribe if you want to see more of my content. Smash that like button for YouTube algorithm. And I will see you on the next one.